All right, first up this morning, we have Dean Hood, Murray State head coach. The Racers now 3-0 and after a win at Tennessee Tech, ranked 25th in the stats poll that came out yesterday. The first AFCA coaches poll just came out at 10 o'clock, uh, 24th in that poll. So, Coach, just uh, a thought on the on the exciting uh, victory at Tennessee Tech. Yeah, it's huge. That's a, that's a tough place to play. And uh, been on the other end, you know, down there several times with some games that went just like our game went, you know, back and forth. And, and then with a comeback, you know, in the second half and uh, very uh, well coached team, tough fundamental team. And it was, uh, you know, if you didn't care who won, that was a heck of a college football game to, to watch. All right. If you know you're going to have a question for Coach Hood, just let me know down in the chat and I will call on you. Um, Coach, I just want to start this, and we talked about the beginning of the year. Just talk about the buy-in from the team. You know, a lot you you've, you took over. A lot of these players were already here on the roster, and, and you've got them off to the best start since 1998. Just getting all that to come together and throwing a, a pandemic in the middle of that, uh, you taking over too. Yeah, I mean that's that's always the critical thing. You know, it's such a fragile deal to to. Uh, you know, have your guys buy in to, to the culture and, you know, what you're what you're trying to accomplish, how you're trying to go about things. So, you know, it's it's tough. Humans don't really like change. And, and um, you know, you're, there's a lot of different ways to do things. So when you come in and you're doing things differently, uh, you know, it's it's scary, you know, that, uh, you know, if the guys are going to buy in or not, because that's what it's all about. I mean, it doesn't matter, you know, really you know, what it is that you're selling or how talented the guys are. It's, it's a matter of, you know, do the guys buy into what you're saying because now they can get the most out of the ability they've been given. So we've been really, really blessed as fragile as that is, you know, that our guys have, have bought in, bought in from the beginning and then, and then very, very fortunate to, to win some football games because then that's just fuel to the fire. And how do you get the cohesion, cohesion between the players who are already there and, and the players you've brought in? Just get, get everybody to be their best self. Well, that's, you know, that's just – you're just blessed. I mean, if that happens, it just truly is a blessing because there's, like I said, it's very, very fragile and there's a lot of things that can go wrong. And there's a lot of, you know, good-meaning coaches doing things the right way, caring about the kids and installing good schemes, and, and you don't get to buy it, you know. So it's just – very, very blessed, you know, when that does happen, uh, especially in the pandemic, because, you know, one one way to to try to get that cohesion, try to get that unity is is through building relationships. And, you know, th this thing right here is, you know, all about not building relationships, stay apart, stay away, don't get close, you know, so it was very, very difficult. And we're just very fortunate. I know it's just a number on a, on a piece of paper, but uh, what's it mean for Murray State to be ranked in the top 25 polls for the first time in a decade? You know, that's that's exciting. I'd rather be ranked than not be ranked. You know, it means you're, means you're winning ball games, but it really has nothing to do with, you know, the opponent you have coming up and how you've got to prepare. All that stuff is exactly the same. We'll talk about that opponent in, in just a second. I also wanted to ask, is there anything different about coaching in OVC the second time around? I realize football doesn't change. The time period changed a little bit, but is there anything that's different this time? Uh, I got a lot older. <laughs> so the coaches, the coaches seem like they're younger and kids seem like they're younger. And I, I seem like I'm older, but other than that, it's, uh, it's all the same. And, you know, really, really blessed with the assistance that I have and, you know, loving that part of it too, is being around them on a daily basis, along with the players, uh, you know, but really, yeah, it's, 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 it's the same, you know, as far as the environment, you know, with everything that was going on in our, in our world and, and everything that made things very, very different. And a lot of things that, you know, you had in that playbook from your previous coaching, you know, you put in the bonfire cause it was all new stuff, but very similar, you know, as far as, uh, as far as being a head coach again at a, at a, at an OVC school. Let's go. Uh, Neil Bradley's got a couple of questions. Go ahead, Neil. All right, Coach, I wanted to ask about uh, Preston Rice had his most uh, efficient game in terms of uh, completion percentage, didn't have any turnovers. It's not that he'd been playing poorly, but seemed to take a step up. Is there adjustments that you made with him or did it just happen to be a big game for him against a different opponent? Yeah, just, you know, we got the guys on the perimeter, you know, going and, and that's a function of trying to do whatever you got to do to win the football game. It was, it was uh, a better game, you know, for our outside receivers. Uh, and so that was part of the plan, but Preston's been the same, you know, all three games. Matter of fact, we just, you know, watched the film again with the offensive coaches and that was, 
you know, one of my comments to him was, you know, we had a guy, you know, blitz and, and come right up the middle. I mean, right at the uh, Preston space and he stepped into and, and made a throw. I mean, it was no guy missed his block. It was a guy coming in the A gap, you know, right at him. And, you know, that's just a comment I made the offensive coaches. It's, you know, you can find talented guys. You can find guys who can throw the football, run the football, you know, do all these things when you're evaling guys on film, but it's really hard to judge that. And when you have that, you're really blessed because there's a, there's not a whole lot of guys out there with a, with a linebacker, you know, come and making a beeline for you that you're going to step in, make the throw, and then take that hit for your team. And uh, that, you know, play right there that we watched uh, this morning just really exemplified, you know, what he is and, and who he is and, and his character and his toughness and his value to our football team. A week ago, I heard you talk about needing to get the ball into Lamartez Brooks' hands more often, and you certainly did that. Tell us about the big game that he had on Sunday. Yeah, he was a monster. Just his catches, you know, the, the jet sweep stuff, the big catch down the, you know, at the end of the game. Uh, and then another one like Preston. I mean, that was, uh, again, watching the film this morning again, uh, was uh, just a very uh, something I'm really, really proud of, of that kid about is, you know, second or third series. I think the first pass that we threw to him was an under route and he absolutely got drilled. And to think about the kind of game he had after that huge hit, I've been a part of, you know, teams where a receiver gets hit like that. And that's, you know, that's it for the day, not because he's injured, just because mentally it, it kind of takes him out of his game. And that just seemed to fuel him. And so really, really proud of him as well, just his toughness and, and what he's all about. And my final question, uh, Tennessee, I know it's early in the week, but uh, tell us uh, about Tennessee State and the challenge they're going to present for you Sunday. You know, Rod's team, very, very similar, you know, to teams of the past, you know, very big human beings up front on, on both sides of the ball. Uh, very, very skilled guys, you know, in the in the back end on both sides, you know, two and seven are really good receivers for them. They got a heck of a trigger guy in their in their quarterback, uh, you know, defensively linebackers that can run, you know, really big inside players, as I talked about. And and then very, very athletic, you know, in the back end at DB. So, you know, really similar, you know, with how how Coach Reed has always recruited with really big, tough guys up front offensively and defensively and then guys that can really run you know, at the skilled spots. Anybody else questions for Coach Hood? I got one more and we'll, we'll let you go, Coach. And you talked a little bit about on Neil's question, but, uh, you know, getting to the ball and interception returns, two for touchdowns, just making big plays. Um, what do you think your defense just is overall, like in three weeks into the season is maybe to where you want it to be, you know, eight weeks into the season? Uh, yeah, I missed you were breaking up a little bit at the beginning Sorry. of the question. Yeah, just the defense, you know, two long interception returns. Just where do you think the defense is right now compared to where it might be later in the year? You know, I, I was really surprised of how well we tackled in game one against UT Martin. Uh, and then, you know, it seemed like we didn't tackle as well against CMO, didn't tackle as well against Tech. Now, Tech had some very talented, you know, receivers. Number seven for them was really good. They had some skilled kids that could really run, you know, so maybe that's a function of – of, of who we were playing, but, uh, you know, we've got to improve on, on the tackling part. That's one area I feel like we can improve, but uh, where they've come from, I think is just, there was initial buy-in, but with some of the stuff you do in practice, as far as like your drill work, you know, I know the coaches, defensive coaches do a turnover circuit, you know, uh, literally about every other day or every day. And, and uh, you know, the kids are now seeing that on the film and showing up on the game tape. And now that's because you got, you know, talented guys that are making plays, uh, but the buy-in to, hey, this drill work actually shows up on game day, then makes them work even harder at that, and then it makes them get better at that skill. So that's been something that's been, you know, really good, and, and they've come a long way, I think, in just two, three weeks right there. Coach, uh, appreciate your time this morning. Best of luck on Sunday, and we'll talk to you next week. Okay, thanks.